Okay, y'all. Hey, this is the Hate Street Voice, and I am so stoked to welcome Cameron Ford and Ava Wolf to Hate Street Voice for edition number 13, lucky number 13, Season of the Witch, which is nothing but women. And um, I'm so stoked to have you guys here. Welcome. Thank and you. You're welcome. And the reason you're here is that I was approached um, by, who was it, Timothy Buck Walter, I think, but, uh, Larson Associates. Um, about the Mill Valley Film Festivals that they have and that your your film, um, The Queen's Closet, apparently won the, what's it called, the TAM Unified Film Festival. So mm -hmm. anyway, welcome. If you guys want to introduce yourselves and sort of tell me how the film all came about, we'll go from there. Sweet. Um, I can go first. Um, hello, my name is Cameron Ford. I am 18 years old and I'm currently a freshman in college. Ooh, what college? Wait, sorry to interrupt, Ava. What college? I'm studying film production at Chapman University. Woohoo! All right. Sorry. Go ahead, Ava. Um, my name's Ava Wolf. I'm 17 and I'm a senior at Tamil Pius High School in Mill Valley. Yeah. And so how you guys obviously have known each other for a long time. And how did you start to work together for this film? I guess that's it. That's yeah. So Tam's got a program called AIM, which is the Academy of Integrated Humanities and New Media. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of a experimental learning program where students are taught how to make documentary films about local and substantive issues. So me and Cam were both enrolled in the program because it's a junior and senior mm -hmm. program. They have both grades involved. And we, I think, Cam, we had art together um, at TAM. So we knew of each other, but we're not really involved or friends until our final semester where we were tasked to make a documentary about art and about its impact on communities. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it was kind of like, I never really knew Ava and then we started working on the documentary together and we just wow. like together so perfectly. And now she's like my best friend in the whole world. Yeah, uh, I've like never clicked with someone like me and Cam have. Like we have all these weird things that you just <laughs> would never think we would have in common, but we do because we're very different people, but also very similar in a lot of ways. Mm. So, I mean, I think the doc worked out so well just because creatively we both like were able to play off of each other and Cam's really good at certain things and I'm good at certain things and we kind of were able to balance each other out where we weren't good at certain parts or aspects of creating films or interacting with people or whatever it was mm. yeah and what so what would you say are your each of your fortes what what do you what are you good at say Ava start What's sure. your thing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like in making that doc, I had less experience with the film side of things, whether it was editing or physically filming or piecing stuff together. Um, so I kind of handled the writing and contacting people and doing interviews. I was kind of managing that side of things, mm. whereas Cam was kind of the filmmaker in a sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Ava's like the dream producer. <laughs> like Ava gets stuff done. Um, and she's also super, super creative and artistic. Um, yeah, I definitely like, I feel like I was definitely on the editing front, um, but we did everything together. Ava's just like a very good coordinator. Cool. Yeah. And so what made you come, what, how did this whole thing with the hate? Because as I was saying earlier to you guys before we started recording, it's like, I probably wouldn't be talking to, I mean, until you, you know, which you're going to be famous in a few years, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it probably wouldn't be in this edition of the Hate Street Voice were it not for the, the Larson Associates uh, reaching out to me about the Mill Valley Film Festivals and you guys won the, like, as I said, the TAM Unified Film Festival. Um, like, how did you pick the hate and how did that all start? So... Yeah. We, I mean, we got like a very long and wordy prompt for school that was very school driven. Um, but basically it was like, write a, make a film about a local story about art as a way to join a community over a substantive issue or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and Ava and I were stoked because we love an art prompt. Um, and <laughs> uh, I think we knew we wanted to do something with drag 
but we weren't sure where to start. So we literally just walked up and down the hate and up and down Castro, just like going into all the businesses that looked like they had something to say. And we just talked to people and we walked into Piedmont and like a, you walk in there and it's like a whole other world. It's like such a magical dream, like empire. It's incredible. <laughs> And so we were like, we need to talk to these people. Like, who is this? Where is this? Where am I? Um, and that's kind of how it started. Wow. Yeah. And did, did you have, go ahead, Ava, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I mean, I just, the prompt, like, it, I want to just emphasize that it was very like school, you know, like we took a very um, untraditional route when it came to the prompt because our, our teachers actually didn't love our film. Yeah. Because we got a bad grade. We got, really? totally got a bad grade. Oh, we got the worst hilarious. grade out of our class um, <laughs> because it was so like Funny. artistic, you know, and yeah. it was to us, at least it was yeah, a okay. very important topic and yeah. drag as an art form was, you know, totally fine when it came to the art piece. And then but they, I don't know. They just thought that it was like, it's, I, I don't, I don't even know what they it thought. Wasn't <laughs> like it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Had um, you had much, had you had much um, exposure to hate street? I know you guys live in Marin, right? Um, yeah. Had you really, I mean, it's obviously your parents are pretty dang cool. If you're making a movie like this, they, they're pretty hip. They turned you, <laughs> yeah, you good folks apparently, but you know, had you been to the hate, did you, you know, obviously know about the hippies and all that. So mm -hmm. a little background on that. I think, I mean, I'd been to the hate a few times, but I didn't, it was like, let's go to the hate and take cool pictures and look at the shops. Like I never really experienced it or knew what it was all about. I never knew the history mm -hmm. and like how much it was involved in like starting drag and starting just like, I guess, a culture of like openness and acceptance. Um, but yeah, I got like a whole new perspective on the hate after making this documentary for sure. Wow. That's awesome to hear. We like that. How about you, mm -hmm. Ava? Yeah, I mean, I think both of us, we grew up in this area, Bay Area, um, and both spent a lot of time in the city um, and on the hate, but never really immersed ourselves inside of the culture there just because we weren't necessarily a part of it, just because mm -hmm. we didn't live there. We didn't necessarily know anyone there. Um, and we knew the hate, you know, like we could go and walk around on the hate and hang out in the city and have fun and whatever, but it wasn't necessarily our community. Right. Um, but after getting involved with drag and getting involved in kind of the specifics of the history and hate and the history of the LGBTQ movement in San Francisco, like we were really able to immerse ourselves in everything that goes on there. And, uh, and how did you oh, go ahead? And especially. Sorry. Oh, no, just especially with the Piedmont Boutique and with mm. the people there. Uti, yay. I'm going to go talk to I live around the corner literally for like the last forever um, I love Uti. She's amazing. But um, so how did you find the, 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 the person behind me and explain how that all kind of manifested? Or was this an old friend of yours? Or how did that work? Yeah, I mean, I think with the school program and it being school, we only had so much time. I think we had six weeks to create this whole documentary. And you are just scrambling to find yeah. whatever you can, <laughs> wherever you can. Like we are reaching out to people that, you know, from any platform anywhere ever that we've heard of seen and I think I found Blake on Instagram after just doing a random search for SF drag um and just sent this big long DM being like I love you please talk to us <laughs> um and just show literally showed up at their house and um it was just amazing everyone that we talked to was so willing and so excited to help us with our project and to help us with our kind of vision of what we wanted to do. Um, Cause it, I mean, it takes a lot to do drag. Like it's a lot of time. It's a lot of energy, money. And everyone was like, yes, I would love to dress up in drag for you. Like, please come talk, please. You know, they just wanted to share and it was great. That's awesome. That's so amazing. It's really beautiful to hear, um, you know, young women your age, like really realizing the whole thing of, and that's partially what this edition of the magazine's about is, is the oppression of the feminine and the, you know, and the, the whole thing about the season of the witch and how if women have power, they're considered a bitch or a witch or, you know, and that whole thing. And you guys are really clearly steamrolling past that at <laughs> your young ages, which is so badass. And I was um, saying to you earlier, Cameron, that I totally love 
hey y'all whoever's watching this you got to go watch the <laughs> death of a unicorn it's so amazing but the music's amazing the whole idea of be your own best friend that whole message is just so freaking awesome so i'm cursing in front of you young women <laughs> you've heard the word fuck before sorry uh <laughs> sorry mom and dad um but yeah so it's really beautiful to see like uh, the messages in fact like i said i was stalking you on on uh, youtube uh cameron but mm -hmm. it seems like you have a really clear message of really wanting people to to really be who they are and not apologize and can you mm -hmm. expound on that a little bit well i think like from beginning in my film career like the reason i got into film is because my dad makes movies mm -hmm. um but I never, I, I, so I don't know, that was always like who I looked up to. Um, but I never really was around women who made film for a very long time until Ava. Like Ava was the first female person who I ever collaborated with. And that just made such a difference for me, I think in my entire film career. Um, the first films I ever made were at a film camp I went to where I was the only girl yeah. out of 12 guys. Yeah. I went to Vermont for three weeks and I was the only female person there and that wow. was crazy to me That's and that crazy. was that was how I started making stuff and it was just like this is not what I want this is not what I want my career to be I do not want to be surrounded by men I do not want to have this huge male influence affecting what I created mm. um and so I think ever since then and then after working with Ava and now at film school of course there's like there's actually more women in my film program <laughs> it's actually really cool um, super cool I just like want everything I make to be so sincerely me and colorful and sparkly and I guess feminine but just magical energy hmm. which magical feminine powerful energy and everything I create from now on because I just want to attract I guess other female filmmakers and people like me who want to steer away from this this like I guess not male influence but that's all I had when I started making films and I want to encourage other women that we don't have to start out like that like we can start with this magicalness so how old were you when you very first picked up a camera or a phone or I guess you, did you imagine did you start uh, with a phone camera or did you start with an actual camera camera I actually started with a camera camera and now I film everything on my phone which did is you did you have, did you film this film time. the queen's closet sorry the Queen's Closet was on both. Okay. Death of Unicorn was on my phone. Mm. Um, just because I just want to focus on the way, I don't know. I'm not good at cameras yet. Um, I, I, but, I disagree. I disagree. <laughs> um, so how old do you mind if I ask? Like, how old was that when you said my film career, but you're only 18, which is amazing. Yeah. It's badass. <laughs> um, I was actually going through my camera roll the other day and I made this like eight minute silent horror film when I was in sixth grade with my neighbor that I completely forgot about um I, I've always been making art I've always been making little movies um but the first film I made was in eighth grade and it was a documentary about fast fashion and it was like totally random wow. um and then I started making short Instagram edits and just like taking videos from my camera roll and putting them into little things I actually have an Instagram edit of the hate um oh. from like freshman year um and then I guess when everyone starts talking about college, like, what do you want to do in college? What's your career? What's your future? I was like, okay, maybe I should start actually thinking about this and actually working with other people. Mm. Um, and then not the summer, but the summer before that is when I went to Vermont and did the film program with all the guys and started to actually make real narrative films. Right. Got you. Wow. Yeah. And how about you, Ava? Like, what was your first foray into the, into the biz? Um, I mean, from a film standpoint, the program at school, like I had never been exposed to any kind of film. Um, I actually considered myself to be pretty bad at like the technology and film and photography and all that. Um, but honestly, working with Cam, like it, I think I like Cam had a very clear preconceived thought of what I thought film was and what um, kind of person you had to be in order to do that kind of stuff and I just never approached it because I didn't feel like I fit in that box mm -hmm. um, but I think both of us together like grew a lot making that documentary because we realized that we could make our own creative choices and do whatever we wanted in art and in film like it could go hand in hand and it didn't need to be one way or another even if we were being told other things by people around us um 
And I'm, I don't think film is my path right now. That's not where I'm headed, but it's still something that I love and I do. And art is what I'm going to do. Like I'm going to do studio art, visual arts, and I wouldn't have been okay with exploring that path if I had not um, kind of let go of the perspective of things that was being shoved mm-hmm. on me um you know by society by the people around me by what's expected living in this area and living as a woman um yeah that that actually leads to 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 where I was just listening to made me sorry my earrings are probably hitting the mic um is like that's kind of this whole edition of the magazine again it's you know, it's, it's for a woman and this isn't like a feminist edition. I mean, I, guys are awesome too. And guys are learning how to embrace the feminine within themselves and like, be cool with like, let the ladies lead and then cool. Like, let us, let us drive for a while guys kind of thing. And those kind of guys are the cool guys. But um, as far as the, the whole thing about being afraid to shine or being in, in, intimidated to shine, because number one, you don't want to piss anybody off. Number two, you don't want all the attention um you know you're all of that thing of sort of like trying to 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 dim ourselves down could you could you speak briefly about that either of you you know is there anything you have to say about that yeah I was say, do you want to go first Ava? uh sure um I mean I just feel like there's a lot of pressure put on everybody to be a certain way do a certain thing um and that can be a variety of different things it's not necessarily one thing or another but everyone needs to be successful and people are scared because you don't want to not do that like you don't want to not be successful and you don't want to not reach your full potential and you don't want to disappoint people around you and you don't want to disappoint yourself um which ultimately stops you from doing the things you want to do like to suppress any part of yourself makes it impossible to explore the entirety of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think letting go of that is something that everybody can do because, I mean, for me personally, I would not have been able to make this documentary if I had not let go of my apprehensions about making film, about um, presenting it, about going places with it, because it was something that I didn't think I could do and that I didn't think I could be good at and I didn't think we could go anywhere with it. But um, I mean, the moment... I let that go and Cam let that go and we all just decided to have fun with it and do what we could, you know, it just turned into something that was really representative of ourselves and of what we were trying to accomplish. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, Well spoken. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think Ava and I both had a moment together when we were making the queen's closet. I think it was after the Udi interview. Um, and we didn't really get the historical, side that we were looking for from that interview it was more of like a personal it was just it was different than we thought and we both kind of were looking at each other and we we're like okay like we did not get we asked questions that we wanted to have in the documentary for what our teachers wanted us to have and I think we both realized like okay this documentary is special we're proud of what we're making so far like we're just gonna make this documentary what we want it to be we're just gonna take this as artsy and as important to us and we're just going to not focus on the prompt we're not going to focus on what the teachers want we're just going to make this for us and I think that really changed the course of the documentary and like we got a bad grade but also (laughs) we got this opportunity we're doing this interview now you know like we made something we're proud of like I love sharing this documentary with people I love that I have my name on this and I did this with Ava um and it it doesn't matter that we got a bad grade. Like this is so much more than that. And I think, I just think I'm so glad that we, that we work together on this because without Ava, we would not have been able to create something that's, I guess, more than just a school assignment. Like I don't think of this documentary as a school assignment. I think of this as a very special project I had with Ava and with Blake and Udi and Andrew and everyone that we did this with. Yeah, Yeah. it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a beautiful sort of like, you guys being you know on the young side and then the whole the whole you know queer thing and the you know the dressing and the freedom to express your who you are and then uti who's just amazing you know she's (laughs) uh, she's like she's been there for 45 years i mean i've seen her for years she's so cool 
So it's just a really beautiful, I don't, hybrid's not the right word, but a nice, um, you know, mix of, of the youth and the, and the, there, there's just a lot of beauty. And, and it's just wonderfully shot. Um, let's see, where do I go from there? Oh, I was going to say while you were speaking, Cameron, about like, have you guys had to do, you know, now that you're, you know, you won the award or whatever, have you had to do like, what are they called? Um, meet and greets or whatever, they, what are those called when you have to do your Oh, I wish we were that special. Your media, your, your media tour or whatever. Is this your first media tour? It's this is our first media experience for the Queen's Closet and my first media experience ever. Yeah, you're doing great. I, the, I, you guys are acting like professionals. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't even know what I'm doing. And I've been doing it for, you know, I went to SF State in the 80s. So <laughs> I still don't really know what I'm doing. Except you just, yeah. keep, you know, you just keep going and it seems to be working. And it seems to be the mm -hmm. way to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm glad. Okay. I'm glad I brought that up. Okay. So let's see what else do I have? Um, season of the witch. What, what is your guys's like intuitive response to the word witch? Does it make you feel like it's a bad word, a good word? A lot of, I think it scares guys. What's your response to the word witch? It makes me excited. It's like, <laughs> it makes me feel like I have this like feminine, witchy, powerful side inside of me and I get to like unleash it and I don't really understand it yet but it's like forming inside of me. No, me and Cam, we love this stuff. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> we really do like, and it's funny, our art is all whimsical and weird and fun. And the queen's closet was the same. Like we're, we're both very into that kind of stuff. It's just like fun for us. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and my girlfriend who's writing an article in the thing, we've been researching goddesses and We've been so more, more and more amazed at like the relationship, like the Egyptian goddesses had the cat and, you know, Sekhmet had the, the lion and this like empower, these were goddesses back, you know, and those, those powerful women were, you know, burned at the stake, you know, eventually, you know what I mean? So the whole metaphor of the whole journey of the being the divine feminine is pretty intense. So to be a witch, you do have to be pretty intense. And, and you know, there was Glinda the Good Witch. You don't have to be a goody two shoes. This is my own personal doing this this particular edition. I've been doing my homework and exploring the idea of like the witch and the you know the the goddess and then the prostitute. There's all these layers of of, of femininity, and it's just um, I just think it's beautiful that you guys have made this film, and it's so not about your own you know it's not your own it's just this beautiful take on that struggle of of expression on you know masculine feminine uh, you know on oppression on all of that stuff that wasn't really a question but um do you have anything to say about goddesses i guess and witches or yeah. <laughs> it's um, kind of, it's kind well of i was very curious when you said season of the witch in the email yeah. and so i ended up watching this really random documentary about witchcraft and in some country that is not America. I don't remember specifically. <laughs> um, but the there's like a, this family of witches there that's like revered for being like the most powerful like women in the world there. And I just thought that was so, I just didn't know that was happening. Mm. Um, and so now I'm just gonna take this witchiness and keep learning in, about it because I'm so curious. Yeah, um, cool, cool. But I'm really into unicorns. That's like my thing right now. <laughs> if you can't tell from the death of a unicorn um and I'm like have this book right now behind me and I'm learning about like unicorns and femininity and, and unicorns and just stuff like that I don't know wow I that's love what it, so stuff like that. what's the no what's the nut the mystical yeah what's the nutshell are you what's a unicorn what's the what's the one liner about what a unicorn is I don't know yet <laughs> I do not know but I have this I will show you it's really cool <laughs> Oh, very magical. Yeah, I haven't really gone into it yet, but I'm very excited about yeah. it. Well, you got to come back to the hate because my girlfriend, Sunshine Powers, hi, Sunshine, say hi to Sunny. Uh, <laughs> she owns Love on Hate on the corner in oh, the, really? the tie dye store. And she, I mean, she's such an amazing one. She's like the, the queen of Hate Street. She's been here forever. Um, I'm like the ambassador because I talk to everybody. She's like the queen of the unicorns. But, um, yeah, she's all about unicorns and she's all about like, and she's, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter how old you are, but it's, you know, the magical, the colorful that, you know, there is, you know, be magical, have a magical mm -hmm. day, all of that, which I think is, um, to bring it back to the hate street voice kind of is, is, yeah, there is, did you, do you, do you think, do you feel like there's a special energy here or 
you know, what's your take on that? Well, I have one thing to say about that store. Um, I went there once like two years ago. I think I have it. Um, and I was taking pictures through this crystal there. And the, I don't know who it was there so long ago, but they let me keep this. And I have this in my film bag and I actually filmed a shot through it in Death of the Unicorns. But this is like my, and this and, is the opening and, shot of the Queen's Closet. The Queen's Closet, yeah, we use yeah. that on the Queen's Closet a lot. We use this in the transition. Like this crystal has like shaped part of my like, personal cinematography style that's and it's, so they gave awesome. it to me from that store yeah that's so see if you had never made this movie you'd never have that's such that's beautiful that's synchronicity mm -hmm. y'all yeah that's, that's that's like that's i think that's our witchy powers coming together mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely <laughs> yeah yes. I mean, I think the history is very magical like people don't realize how influential the hate and the Castro and all that was to San Francisco as a whole and the kind of people that are here. Like there was a reason we were drawn to make that film. Like we started with nothing, with no direction, with no idea of what we wanted. And all it took was to walk in to Piedmont and onto the hate and to talk to someone there to decide that that's what we wanted to do and to throw our grade out the window and not care about you know, who was watching our film and how it would be perceived or whatever. Like it was something we needed to do for ourselves. Like the idea of expression and the idea of just embracing your true self and um, exploring all aspects of yourself was something that me and Cam were both going through personally. Like it was something that we needed to do for ourselves regardless of external reasons of why we were doing this film. And like, the hate drew that out like people are so open so wanting to you know express themselves and to have everyone around them express themselves and it's just a very judgment-free place mm -hmm. and it was the perfect place for us to explore those things it's so awesome to hear that's so awesome well thank you thank thank you uh school system for forcing these girls to <laughs> <laughs> go explore the world and get a bad grade <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, and then and then we shouldn't make it too long. Um, you're, oh, I just wanted to throw it out my note, little notes. Um, Cameron, your use of music is totally excellent. Like I've already downloaded, I shazammed a bunch of your stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, you, it, it, and where do you get your, where, where does your, most of your musical inspiration is like, oh, I want this kind of music for that. Or is it like a song drives the visual for you? Or how does that work? So for Death of the Unicorn, since that's just like the last thing I made, um, I only use this one artist named Debbie McCallion. And I just I just have always loved her music. And when I was thinking about the film, I was and writing this like script shot list for the film. I was listening to that music. And Cats so it all just like, came together. I think it just all of that entire album that I used is just songs about My Little Ponies, which is so silly and fun. But I just I just loved all that music. Um, is Cats Millionaire new or something? I'm like an old fart, so I wouldn't know. But they're really, I mean, I'm that really, really interesting music. Yeah. So I actually could go talk about this forever. I'm like obsessed. Um, so Cats Millionaire is like a small project, and that artist has like 13 other like wow. musical endeavors. Yeah. Um, some of them have like millions of monthly listeners. Like she just has like she just does everything. She makes mm. a bunch of stuff. Um, and so I always look at, her name is Debbie McCallan. I always look at her stuff when making stuff because she just has such a like wide range of music. Wow, shout out to her. Maybe you'll be working yes. with her. It's in the near future. <laughs> yeah. Come on, we, we can make it happen. <laughs> we can invoke it. <laughs> um, okay, oh, and that actually, that kind of leads to the, the clo two closing statements. Um, the Cats Millionaire sing a song, Humans Are Terrifying. I love mm -hmm. that. That song's brilliant. It's like, it humans are terrifying. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the only in the, the planet, I mean, whatever's going on out there is woohoo. I feel so badly for you guys. And I love to see that you're creating art, um, you know, instead of like just playing video games or, you know, wigging out about how fucked up the world or messed up the world can be. Sorry, parents. Your parents are not going to like me piercing. Um, you can edit it out. Hey, Cam, I might, I might hire you to edit all this out. <laughs> um but the thing is um the 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 cat's millionaire linked into i'm really into like why things connect and then mm -hmm. it's the year of the tiger and i happen to be tiger and then this whole research into goddesses and and the whole relationship with the feline 
and the feminine and how Nefertiti, you know, the god, the cat goddesses and, you know, the panthers and the, in the, you know, Latino world and the black panther and, and all that magicalness. You want magic. There it is right there. Um, there's not really a question there either. I, um, I guess if you were really going to roar, let's just make it a corny segue, but if you, if you wanted to roar with your message to the world or actually start with the hate, like what would you like to say to the hate community or roar, meow, whatever. And then it's because hate street voice is hyper local with a global perspective. So it's not just about this community. It's about like communities everywhere. You just say hello to your neighbors. You say hello to the male lady. You know, you hopefully people, that's where it's going to get better in this world, I think. So what would you like to say to the hate first and then just basically to the world in general? Um, <laughs> that's a big question. That's a big question. You could just say hi. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just, I love the hate. I love what the hate does. It's craziness in a nutshell. Like nowhere is like the hate. I mean, people who live on the hate and live in San Francisco forget that like nowhere else is like that. Like people, people are not like people on the hate. Like <laughs> it's just special, you know? And everyone can feel special on the hate. Like that's why people come to visit. That's why it's such an influential kind of point on the map in San Francisco that everyone wants to go to the hate and it's just mm. because of the energy like mm. yes there's cool shops yes there's fun things to do but it really is the people in the community there um and I guess like the reason for that is because people are creative and be because people are choosing to be happy rather than to fall in the traps of being unhappy for various reasons and for various external pressures and expectations and that's something everybody can learn from and you would you because this is your art right yeah. behind me and that's beautiful <laughs> and that's part of how you keep your creativity and your positivity alive obviously right is that a big yeah. part of it yeah yeah is I it mean art is so important to me like it's expression it's like my way of communicating whatever is going on in my head mm -hmm. um and it's just fun like it's a way to processing and healing and you know doing what you can to be happy and to find something that you love and what you that you can do and whatever and yeah yeah thank you that was beautifully spoken yeah Ava. <laughs> um okay what do i have to say um I here's, think here's yours yeah <laughs> <laughs> we love camp art this is why Ava and i are different <laughs> no i love it that's kind of why i tried to bring that it's, i love it <laughs> You both. Um, I think what I have to say to the hate and why I think the hate is so special and also what I learned from making the documentary especially is like the more you surround yourself by for me particularly like the more I surround myself with people that make me feel creative and inspired and just color and sparkles and just like happy mag magical energy like the more I'm able to to bring that on to other people and the more inspired I am to make art and to share my art and to learn and to teach other people. And I think the hate is so special because you can do all of that there and you go to the hate and you just feel all of that energy that I was just explaining. And you, I just, I always leave the hate like with a million pictures on my phone, a million things I wanna recreate, a million things I wanna draw and pull from and people I wanna talk to and places I wanna go back to and I wanna bring my friends and my family there. <laughs> and I just, I just love it. Hey. That's yeah. very nice. That's the, the hate Ashbury loves you too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you got next time you hang out, we'll take you out to lunch. Oh, you have to come get the magazine and um, mm -hmm. we'll, have to, we'll yeah. have to talk about that because you guys are going to have to um, let me know what, what image there's not a lot of room in the magazine, but it'll go on the website too, but we'll figure out like what images um, obviously for the, for the uh, queen's closet, but definitely, um, you know, uh, images that mean something kind of that bridge the that bridge the two mm -hmm. um yeah so i guess that's it thanks for being here i thanks really really yeah, yeah. really appreciate everything you guys are doing it's so inspiring and it's thank you for being creative because this never would have <laughs> happened and like again thank you to the to the school system for <laughs> 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 yeah. so, you know, driving you to the hate ashbury yeah. i just think it's so Ooh. exciting and incredible that Ava and I are 
we made something and now people are watching it and they want to hear us Loving talk about it, it. yeah That's like this is like the most like rewarding experience I never thought I would ever make anything that people were interested in especially in high school so this is just like this has just been such like a magical yeah. experience it's I mean, we yeah. we love art like yeah. art is our life it's what we want to do it's what we want everyone in the whole world to do like <laughs> why would you not and it's just it's always been personal for both of us mm -hmm. like I think both of us when we made this film and came together like art was something we did on the side like it was something that we defined our identity with but was still not necessarily our connection to the outside world mm -hmm. and like through making this film it kind of it just made it really clear that like that is something we can do and it is something that other people can appreciate and it's a community that we can insert ourselves in and like find a lot of family in inside of and build a life around it and it's just like it's very exciting and it's it, very rewarding. It, it like, breaks yeah. all the it breaks all the boundaries too of like yeah. you know black white gay not gay rich poor all of that stuff which I think is probably the most beautiful thing about art you know is is, is little kids being free to express themselves and that keep that energy keep going and that magical energy that we all have like you were talking about Cameron that you know keeping that magic alive so thank you for keeping the magic alive peace you guys we'll see you again okay yes, yes. So i mean much. i'll be back i still have a year of high school i still have documentaries to make the cool. hate will be definitely i will revisit um, yeah just come on out well you're gonna have to come get the magazine so yeah gonna, so yeah, i'll yeah. come <laughs> we'll see you guys well, well you come to the city pick up the magazines and, and we'll see you then in person yes okay. I love that. awesome okay. thank you, you so guys much. thanks so much it's been great Bye. Cheers. Peace.